Ira, it's a pleasure to see you. It's been a while since I've seen you. However, I know that you're out there on the circuit doing your thing. And as an ex-alumni of the school, I'd really like for you to share with us a little bit of your journey, if you're happy to do that. Um, yeah. For us to, yeah, just give some insight into where you are now and how you managed to get to where you are. So maybe my first question for you is, um, how did you encounter the Northern and what, how did your how did your journey start to us? Um, wow, well, it's a long journey. Um, it started, I think, back when I was around 10. Um, and it was from where basically my mum, it's all kind of stemmed from my mum and really being into the arts and being into, um, she was into Phoenix Dance Theatre um, back in the 80s. And um, she came across someone selling a, um, what's the newspaper that, um, uh, on the street, I forgot what it's called, uh, The Big Issue. And in the big issue, there was uh, a, a little kind of um, advertisement for classes at Northern School of Culinary Dance. And she'd been looking for ages for me to get the right dance class. And when I was younger, I was going to ballet classes with all these girls in little tutus. And I'm there in my tracksuit, <laughs> rocking up, you know, in Huddersfield and going, this ain't for me. Like, I can't do this. I gave it a try, but I was just like this. I just don't feel comfortable. And so when we, my mum came across this one at Northern, I was like, okay, go to another one, see what it's going to be like. And as soon as I got there, I was like, okay, this is different. This feel, I feel at home here, even though it was like quite a long way away from where I was living. It was just like the, you know, the teachers there that were RJC, who were really um, kind of taking um, a lot of uh, boys, black boys and girls, from the, the the local community and they just knew how to speak to young people and I felt inspired and felt like okay these are these guys who are like strong and muscular and you know that masculine which is completely different to what we kind of I kind of seen as a dancer mm. um at that time so it was it was really like okay this is this is really cool you know like when you're a kid called cool, big jumps and all of that kind of stuff which really got me into it. And that was kind of the start, really. And um, and that was when I was really young. So my mum used to, to bring me up to, to Leeds to do those classes on a Saturday. And then obviously when you get older, like it kind of dropped off. And then and then I, basically when I got to leaving school, um, I was really into basketball and I kind of was like, I had to make a decision whether to go to Northern or go to um, a basketball academy. And we went to the open day at Northern School and everyone just made me feel so kind of welcome. And also it was the, because I'm severely dyslexic, that was a big um, thing for me to overcome uh, through school and education. And my mum was helping me a lot through all of that. And when I got to Northern, they were very used to people with dyslexia and known how we could work around a lot of the modules and a lot of the, um, the written work. Mm -hmm. um and so for me it was like first it was like right okay I'll do one year of this uh I'll do you know I'll do an A level just to like come out of school straight out of school I'll keep basketball going so I was I was playing for uh, Le uh, Leeds Tigers as well at the same nice. time so I was training in the evening doing I was doing um doing games on Saturday and then I was training doing you know Martha Graham and ballet you know throughout the uh the week then they soon realized I was like I've got to make a choice out of one or the other because the dance is much harder than I expected but I like that I like a challenge and I was like actually falling in love with it whereas okay. before it was like a bit of a fun thing but it became now it became like oh no this is this is I can really put all my energy into this so I kind of dropped the basketball because it wasn't helping my flexibility okay. and I gave everything to to the college um and um and into the classes and it was you know it was it sounds really kind of um like dream or like kind of um uh, I don't know uh, corny but it was the making of me and I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you I say this to everyone northern school was the making of me um I went from being at the bottom of the class pretty much in every um apart from uh, PE 
and art, um, I was made to feel like the system didn't work for me at school, just didn't work. It made me feel like I wasn't intelligent. And it was when I got to Northern, I realized I have a high level of intelligence, but it's just not in the capacity that um, the kind of traditional societal um, sees and is is um, is uh, amplified or celebrated. And so for me, I just grew. As soon as I went to Northern, I basically went from the bottom to the top of the class. And then I was like, right, OK, I'm going to do I'll go go and do the degree course for another three years um and again I grew and grew and grew and my my vocabulary I I really struggled to speak I I um couldn't I, I, I got too nervous to speak on the phone and um all the kind of um modules that I did which was amazing Northern got me to um basically record them all instead of actually writing it down and then I started to build up a skill of communication mm. of what how I feel and what I'm doing in terms of the dance and how to communicate that through words um and that I think was more of a bigger skill than for me to struggle trying to write um and so yeah I just I, I kind of from there got more and more and more confidence and I did uh, three years and then I kept I was auditioning the third year for like Phoenix and I was auditioning for uh, random and different I kept getting like down to the last two or whatever it was um but not quite landing the the jobs and so then I I stayed on for another year <laughs> and I did um, the postgraduate course so it was um Verve mm. um year 2007 and it was a great year it was like the the choreographers were incredible it was like Hoffesh and it was um who are the um Finn Walker and there's just great great it's such a great every piece was really really good and unique and um so I was doing that and then I auditioned for DVA mm -hmm. I went down and I was like okay I'll go down to a DVA it's not really, at that time it was like it's not really my thing I it was much more technical like um you know kind of much more um Oh, what's his name oh god the director uh yeah, yeah uh choreographer um lloyd um, newson no oh uh rafael bonicella oh yeah so yeah, i was yeah. really into rafael bonicella that was my thing it was cool it was fresh at yeah. the time and um and so then when I went and did DVA and we're doing all these words and like doing accents and I was like oh like I've been told that I couldn't like do acting because my dyslexia a lot of time at school because I was kind of into it but they were like well you can't read the script so but the way that we were doing was we we're listening to um ear airpods um ear, ear pieces at the time and listening to accents and we were basically left replicating what we were hearing and speaking at the same time and then moving and it was like oh and oh, I can maybe I can do this and then from there then kind of that was it that was kind of I got the I got the first five weeks of um, a job and I was doing verb at the same time so I had obligation of you know still being with verb so I was basically traveling I was doing touring with verb and then my days off I was traveling even sometimes flying from Scotland down to London to do a week or the few days I could do with Lloyd Newson and then flying back and doing the tour. And, and I was literally doing that. It was mental. But you do what you do, you need to do. And um, the school was really supportive in that. Um, and then, yeah, and then that was kind of the start of my career, starting with DBA and getting to travel the world and um, and being these amazing um, venues and got to see, like, these incredible countries. It was, you know, it was the dream. That was the dream. I remember my first year we got this piece of paper that said write down like it, uh, what your dreams are like you're in what you want to do and I remember mm. writing down like, I just want to be with a international dance company where I can travel the world and I got I was slightly getting disheartened when in my third year when I wasn't really doing, getting the jobs I wanted but I knew I was really close to it so then when this landed and I didn't realize the the kind of significance of DVA at the time until I got the job 
Mm. And then I was like, oh, people are like talking about this company a lot. And then I started to research more and more. And I was like, okay, they're, they're kind of a big deal. Um, and so, yeah, that was uh, my, my, me as a, um, you know, a creative. Um, that was me kind of the birth of me of, as a creative. I was learning so much from all the people who were older than me, more experienced than me, around me. I was the youngest in the company um, and learning a lot from Lloyd Newson um and yeah and then and then from there things started to kind of fall quite well because i'd obviously it's like kind of thing a badge of honor where you you're in a kind of company and people go okay well if they're with them then it means that they must be they must be all right and um so then i worked with um in between jobs i was working with uh um uh um oh my god my brain's going crazy um reached Alston for a bit in between in, in between that and then I started doing like I think I had like the odd job when I was doing later on I realized I got to a point where because it opened that door for me of actually starting to act and playing characters I really started to fall in love with playing characters which I never knew that I was ever going to do I was like no Amazing. technique 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 that's what I want to do you know, and then when I started playing characters, I was like, I just got the bug for acting and um, I wanted to pursue that more. And so then when I was going to like Richard Alston and stuff like that, it was something that I always thought I wanted to do. And then once I'd done it, I was like, mm, actually, I, I, st I want to go back to the character work. So, yeah, so from there, I started doing much more stuff at the National Theatre. So I did like, I did Fellow at the National and I'm still going back to to DVA. So I was with DVA for about five years. Mm, nice. Um, two different uh, piece, uh, two shows, but they had uh, two um, tours uh, connected to them. Um, and then once I kind of decided to move on, I went into much more theatre work, where I was still using my body, but playing characters. So it's more stuff like the Young Vic and uh, the National and the Globe and. Um, you came north, didn't you? You came to Leeds because that was the last time I think I saw you performing. Yeah, oh yeah, and with, uh, with DVA or with the um, language in the wardrobe. It, the language, it was yeah. an incredible character. Yeah, yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was that was a great job actually because working with Sally Cookson, who's the director, um, she she's really unique in her way of working because she is a collaborator and I've worked with lots of collaborators before. Um, most of the work I do is collaborating, um, but she also, each performer got a royalty. Um, and what he did was, it's like a tiny, tiny percent, but what he does is it shows her kind of acknowledgement for the work and the creativity that the performers bring to the show. And so it frees everyone up to just give 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 and just just things are coming just go 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 and have that freedom especially when like I've been doing this for a long time now and you go from one job to another and sometimes you give a lot and you kind of left and you feel empty because you've not you feel like you've given to the the piece of work that they had envisioned and then you're kind of left mm -hmm. but this really it kind of made you connected to the the piece and now it's gone on every year and we're still connected to it yeah um I know we get a little bit of uh, pain it's tiny but it's still like you feel like you were the ones who came up with the piece and you're recognized for it I have to say I was blown away with that character and in the foyer afterwards the talk about the movement the physicality in that I mean that could have only have come from your knowledge of movement understanding I don't mm -hmm. think that's, that's not a gift to everyone you know, the yeah. way in which you built that character and how realistic it was, but how animalistic it was. It was incredible. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was it was it was really fun to do. And I think that I think, again, with that collaboration, it meant that I could push it further than it was on the page. Mm. So on the page, it was much more like, you know, more grim is this wolf. And um, and and I kind of was like, well, actually, why don't I kind of how far can I push that? Because obviously it's a wolf that speaks. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, well, is it is it a werewolf? Uh, a werewolf, you know, like 
changing uh, in from the day to the night from a human to a wolf and so then I start to play with the the possibilities with that because then it creates a lot of scope for movement so then I was doing lots of transitional stuff from a human to a wolf and finding that middle ground so where I'm half half when I'm like fully into the the kind of uh, animal of the wolf and when was I upright uh with the the kind of characteristics of a wolf but speaking yeah. so it meant that then it, then it changed the whole spectrum of playing this character and that's what becomes really exciting that's what I like to do with a lot of the characters I work with um and catching the essence of the animal um because uh yeah I'm actually working on a um um a uh like a master class at the moment around animal and embodying animals and um and how that can how how we can find the essence and not the character uh, not not the um caricature of yeah. an animal but the, the the real the soul of the animal that you know we can and it doesn't need to be you can use different body parts to represent that it doesn't have to be the the, the um classic thing that you think Mm. you would use your human body to represent that animal mm. so I'm really exploring of because I've done lots of work on animals so I've literally just done a show um in London just finished like a week ago playing an elephant called Melina's tail and um that was that was that was really interesting because I was playing I was I did I had to do like a monologue at the beginning as a human Kenyan but it's the elephant story that I slowly turn into more and more into an elephant um and then I die and then I become the spirit of the elephant I said then I have to carry the spirit throughout and I come jump in and out throughout so that was a big challenge a real big challenge well Um, what's interesting is I mean you've come from a movement background and you've kind of you know you're as you say I'll quote this from you NSED was the making of me and I think the foundations and of the fundamentals that enabled you to be not just a movement but also the concept of knowing that you can step into other spaces Mm -hmm. um you know that's something I think now in terms of our student development that we want them to understand how would you help them to kind of gain confidence in that space and to do what you've done um to to kind of move in different spaces yeah Yeah, I think that it is is it's like anything it's like you've got to take that risk everything's a risk you know everything we do in life it, it has a level of risk and it's that thing of the the fear or the 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 confidence of not not knowing can shut you down and so a lot of the stuff we do is not knowing that's the exciting thing about it and I think what I would say is not be especially with I think with dancers is really easy because we are in a mirror a lot of the time because we're, we're training to get perfection as close as perfection we can get um, and changing the muscles and all that kind of stuff it's very easy to fall into the, the a, a trap of n- not to let yourself be silly and to let yourself go wrong and let yourself be humiliated but in the best possible way. And it's taken me years to get to a point, even now I struggle, but I get to a point where I can I can be in a studio when I feel safe, I can really let go. Cause that's when it, you know, special yeah. things come out. And I say this because I think that when you move into a new space, I think that it, 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 you've got to have a, a level of I can fall on my my bum and 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 be okay with it. I'm still going to be okay, and it's that first step of of being make not having the fear of making a mistake, which will start the catalyst for learning. Mm-hmm. And then once you've done that, you go, oh, I might make a mistake there, but I learned this, and actually not as bad. And then and then you go, you get the you start getting the skills, and and then the confidence builds within this new realm and then it becomes exciting and then you and then you just from there it's a snowball effect and and ultimately that's kind of what happened to me I was put in a situation where I had to do I remember I had to do a, a raster's voice whilst listening to him 
at the same time do a, a, a Rasta man from Brixton whilst listening at the same time when I've, n- I've never been in front of people in an audition and then it switches to like a brummy and then and I was just trying to do it and it's because you put in that situation to 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 do that and it's putting yourself in situations that aren't comfortable mm. that they push it pushes you out of your comfort zone and that's how we grow and I think that is that's the essential thing that I've always learned for myself even though you can have as much experience as possible uh, you can have the most in the world but you it doesn't it means that then if you then kind of uh, rely on your like rest on your lo- lo- laurels you're you're ultimately doing yourself a disservice because mm-hmm. you're not staying alive you're not growing you're not living you're not experiencing these ups and downs and I think for me I've, I, I feel very lucky in the respect that I had the foundation of the technique I had the work ethic my work ethic was ridiculous and now I can look back and see how I was when I was 19 18 you know and 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 at the time it was just what I did I was just yeah. like get up get to class ballet contemporary stretching for hours you know, going and doing, you know, you know, doing other stuff outside. And that was just because I loved it. And I knew I needed to, I had this goal that I was going for. But now stepping into the world of the real world, I guess, or more of the real world, I can see that how, how um, dedicated I was, and how unique that is to do that. Um, And if you have the experience of being at a college like Northern or any kind of uh, education to this ex- this this level um it's such a gift for the rest of your life not just for not just for like oh my career mm-hmm. but it's it's a mindset that that even with my kids that I have that I pass on I'm passing on to my daughter who's now doing gymnastics do you know what I mean like I'm teaching her how to have the mindset of never giving up when things are hard and that's what I'm most in, um the most important thing I feel and so that's what I think I would say to anyone um it's it's getting that level of training that is always stayed with me so when I go into acting and you know you find a, the array of different people as as artists mm. but I always keep a level of discipline for my body even if I'm not even doing big stuff like physically I'll mm. always be going, my my body and mind are so connected. Um, and I've learned that because of how I've used my body in the past. And so I I just, I know that actually for me as a um, just an individual, it's so important to have. Um, and when other people are going awry and they're not, they're getting, uh, you know, they're kind of turning up just in time or late or, these kind of things that he's in and everyone and I'm not saying I'm perfect I, of course I'm late and stuff happens but I try to stick to that stuff that I learned from way back um um yeah because it just it's just that foundation I think yeah. oh my god that's absolutely fantastic to hear I mean I think you've shared with us some wise words and and even at a young age, understanding the importance of discipline and what that mm-hmm. discipline is enabling you to do now. That's really yeah. fantastic to hear. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's magical. And I just think there's a few other things in there, I think those that are setting out on this journey can really grasp. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's no worries. A pleasure to hear. Yeah. Your no, and, no, no, no. Um, it's, it's in, and, and like, even now, like from there, like, the next stage that I'm doing is like make I've started making my own films as well okay. I've, I've um I'm doing movement direction so now I'm kind of um I'm I'm kind of helping working with directors to make shows um and so like yeah that's now I'm getting really interested in the creation mm-hmm. rather than the, not as much as the performance but the creation is becoming much more um interesting for me and it's the same thing that we're talking about constantly kind of going right okay this is a challenge let me try and get into that 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 space yeah that's beautiful and that's where you're at at the moment you're kind of working alongside the the kind of development of production so you really are hands-on with any 
thing that's yeah like, like I'm fast. in a mix I'm mixing a lot so like for instance I, I was on stage but um I was like playing one of the main character in a show in a show um and but I also was the associate movement director as well on it um and so and then there's been some other stuff that I kind of been jumping and doing one woman helping out with one woman shows um so it's kind of it's a mix at the moment mm. um I'm I'm kind of aiming towards doing more of it it's only been the first year of, of doing that kind of thing um but it's kind of bringing yeah it's bringing those things that I've learned like I've le- you know the character work that I've learned um as well as my movement because it's the combination of both of them that I found that I I um I, I kind of really enjoy I really enjoy the combination of the both and seeing the possibilities and I think it's only when you work more and more you realize the possibilities um and that people might not see um those little kind of oh wait a minute actually if you do this change the whole meaning yeah. um of what you're doing um so yeah for me that's that's a kind of exciting place yeah. Yeah. honestly it's just been so refreshing to hear hear you speak and reflect on a historical journey but something that's very present so thank you so much for that and, no no um, no worries yeah I, no, I just, it's, it's been a delight speaking to you no it's great to to see, see that you're you know still you know carrying on northern school and that it's still going strong because I think that I've only got, um, you know, praise for Northern and what it's done for lots of reasons um, and and how it made me feel um, and all the people I know before me and after me who I still bump into now, um, you know, it's, uh, who I'm still working with now, like Lisa Wellham, like we're still friends. I've worked with on her, worked with her and Barbie, um, and it was just, you know, we're still like there's loads of connections, which is just so nice. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. No.